Well, the Hatha Yoga project is looking at the history of Hatha Yoga through its texts and also through ethnography as well, and art history, um, uh, sculptural uh, um, iconography and so forth is also something that we've uh, looked at. My role in the project is, to f is focusing more on the texts. I'm involved in editing seven of the ten texts that we've proposed for the project. I'm editing two by myself and I'm leading, I think, another four uh, with the help of Mark and uh, Jim, uh, my, my colleagues on the project. And, and then we're also writing articles about the broader history of yoga based on um, our, our research, our field work, uh, the conferences, the, the various meetings uh, and so forth that have been part and parcel of the, uh, of the project. And the, the outputs will be ten critical editions uh, of the text that we've chosen. We've identified ten texts that really span the history of uh, Hatha Yoga. Um, uh, three or four of them uh, the early history, uh, and then um, several are sort of in the, in the middle, you might say, and three are towards the, the more recent uh, pre-modern period, so from the sort of 16th to 18th century. Um, yes, so that's, that's the, the, the aims of the project. Yes, there are four, uh, four of us uh, full-time uh, on the project and we have uh, two research assistants in India. Um, uh, so yes, the, the, so my, my background is uh, in yoga and Sanskrit. Uh, I, I sort of started the study of both together for different reasons. Uh, this was, uh, I think, towards uh, the, the end of 1996. Um, I, I, I changed from the study of classics to Indian studies at Sydney University for my undergraduate degree and undertook a major in Sanskrit and Hindi. At the same time my health was not in the best of shape and a, a friend uh, suggested I do yoga and that helped me enormously. And it was towards the end of my BA that I realised there were opportunities to do further research uh, on yoga. Many texts hadn't been uh, properly studied, um, uh, translated or, or, or edited. Uh, so I then uh, undertook that for my honours uh, degree, which resulted in a, a sort of a, a very basic um, edition of a yoga text called the Amanaska, a Raja Yoga text. And then very fortunately that then formed the um, the core of my proposal to do a PhD, which was funded at Oxford University, and I had the great uh, uh, fortune and privilege to study with Alexis Sanderson and James Mallinson, who's the, the principal investigator of the Hatha Yoga project. He had finished his PhD with Alexis a few years before, so he was living not too far from Oxford. Um, I was in contact with him, and it was basically the time that I spent at Oxford uh, working on uh, the Amanaska, but also a lot of other texts that were related to it. I mean, one of the one of the uh, um, interesting features of yoga texts that are related to, or that teach Hatha and Raja Yoga or are related to it is that there's a lot of uh, textual borrowing. Um, so when you look at one text, you can't look at it in isolation. Um, simply because there are so many, usually so many verses that are either very similar or perhaps even exactly the same in other works, so you end up dealing with a fairly large corpus of works, which is what we're doing in, in the Hatha Yoga project. Uh, Jim and myself immediately recognised that this uh, that was necessary to understand um, a, a large, fairly large corpus of works, uh, many of them hadn't been studied academically, let alone translated or edited, and that really resulted in us making proposals for further research. We um, initially proposed a, a project to the AHRC in, in, in the UK that was purely philological, 
and they said it was an excellent proposal. Proposal. I think they gave us they gave it a six out of seven or something like that. Good reviews, but then they said it wasn't urgent enough, so we we didn't get the funding. But we used that as the basis for a, a larger proposal that that uh, Jim made to the European Research Council, which included a component of ethnography that uh, ticked the box of interdisciplinary, which which. Um, seems important for academia these days and fortunately that was funded and here we are. <laughs>
uh, ruins and, and, and various temples. Um, yeah, so it, it was a very busy um, and at times very challenging uh, work um, in India, but fruitful nonetheless. Yes, there's a lot still left to be done. Uh, we're in the last year of the project. The fieldwork is finished. I think we've ga gathered uh, all of the manuscript evidence that we need. Uh, we've done the collating. We've um, had workshops on nine of the ten texts that we're editing. They've been wonderful experiences. Again, uh, a benefit of having resources at our disposal has been that we can invite some of the best scholars in the world to, uh, to gather and read the texts that we're working on and that means we've learnt an enormous amount uh, from specialists in other fields about, um, about the text and in hindsight I now realise that to edit a text um, uh, by oneself is um, in many uh, respects uh, a little uh, inadequate. It's not really until you start to read it with other people and get other people's feedback that, uh, that, that, that one can be confident that you can then publish a critical edition having taken into account um, various perspectives, um, all of the uh, variant readings and so forth that other people might question when they, uh, when they read the text with you. So that's been a very valuable and rich experience to, to, to have the workshops. What remains to be done now is to finalise our translations and in some cases write up the notes to the translations. The workshops have also helped enormously with that. Um, people we've read with have given us references, made comments and so forth that we can uh, record in the, in, in the notes, in the annotations. And then we have to write short introductions. In some cases that will that is very easy because we have written um, articles about the texts that we're editing, so it's a matter of um, just redacting the article or drawing the main points from the article and then really referring the, the reader to the article if they want more information. So that's uh, um, a large part of the work done. Uh, there's still another text for which we're having a, a workshop in two or three months time uh, that, that, so that text is is at a more rudimentary stage and I th but I think by the end of the project we'll probably have at least half of the texts that we're uh, proposing to work on with with the publisher half of the editions and then the other half I, th uh, I think we can probably finalize within the, within the next year I think other academics will benefit from our work, um, particularly those of South Asia, um, because many of the texts that we're working on haven't been available to scholars. Many of them have been in uh, manuscript form. And some of the compendiums that we're working on are very broad in their, in their uh, content, so they'll certainly be of interest to people working on other areas of philosophy, Indian history and, uh, and religion. I think our work will also be interesting for yoga practitioners, the yoga community at large, who, who seem very interested in source material. Um, again, a lot of it hasn't been translated, so we'll be helping to add to the available uh, um, material in English. Um, yes, and I yes, I think they'll be the main beneficiaries, academics and uh, yoga practitioners. But I think also um, there's uh, parts of the project that will reach people who don't know much about yoga at all, and then might become interested in it. In particular, the exhibition that is opening at the moment at the Brunei Gallery, uh, showcasing our, our our research. Uh, will uh, interest um, uh, people perhaps just through the artwork, through the illustrations, the paintings and so forth that we've been working on, that have been reproduced in, 
in large um, uh, printed images. Um, Daniela Bevilacqua and Jacqueline Hargreaves have done a, a wonderful job making our research look beautiful as well as cohesive. Uh, yes, and a, a remarkable achievement. Uh, and I think that will appeal to people even if they're not necessary, if they don't have a direct interest uh, in yoga. I think the, the response has been largely positive. Um, uh, I'm not so um, diligent in following social media. <laughs> My wife is, and from what she tells me, um, our articles um, have an impact, uh, seem to be of interest, uh, particularly to the yoga community. Um, the, the, I suppose, um, the people that I deal mostly with, I suppose, are yoga students that I uh, come into contact contact with at workshops, teacher trainings, and so forth, and they also always seem very interested in what in what we're doing. I also uh, deal with academics that I meet at conferences. The project, ha having funding for travel and so forth, has enabled us to attend a lot of. Um, conferences and to also accept invitations when we have to fund our own travel. So we've spoken at many universities in not only Europe but also Asia, uh, Australia, America, uh, and, and that has been largely very positive. Yes, I think the main reason uh, is that many of the texts were still in manuscript form um, uh, up until about 20, 15, 20 years ago. So this one of the Indian scholars that really has done an enormous amount to bring our attention to um, Hatha Yoga texts, particularly those published after the Hatha Pradipika, has been M. L. Gorote, uh, who initially started at the Kaivali Dharma Institute, but then uh, branched out on his own and began the Lonavala Yoga Institute. He did an enormous amount of work travelling around India, particularly Rajasthan, collecting manuscripts of texts that um, hadn't really been studied, and he did editions, published, uh, published them with translations. And he really uh, set um, uh, sort of made it very clear to us in particular that there was a lot of material um, in manuscript form that hadn't yet been properly properly looked at. Um, James Mallinson of course did, did his PhD on the Kirchri video and that um, uh, in, in a sense set uh, a model or a benchmark for critically editing I think a yoga text in in Hatha Yoga. And then I followed with the Amanaskara and had the good fortune to work with him on that. And as part of my doctoral research, I, I attempted to do a survey of Hatha and Raja Yoga texts, basically because the Raja Yoga text I was working on was very early, and its teachings and verses had been borrowed and reproduced in many works that followed it, in particular the Hatha Pradipika. Uh, so it seemed like a good idea to me to trace um, uh, the influence of its teachings and in so doing I was able to produce produce a survey and that survey is something that we've been able to in, enlarge uh, um, with our research uh, on the project. I have a, a very long article on uh, Raja Yoga, early Raja Yoga texts and their notions of liberation uh, and, and so forth. I also have an article coming out on uh, the literature of Hatha Yoga from the 16th to the 18th century, which attempts to sort of provide a survey of the different, the ways that the, the literature changed, the different sort of texts that were produced um, after the Hatha Pradipika. Um, these are articles that um, uh, could serve as, uh, 
as a basis for further research, um, because again, many of the texts uh, that, that we're looking at haven't been edited, haven't been translated. Uh, the Hatha Yoga Project is, is only doing 10, and, um, and there are dozens and dozens of, um, of works still in manuscript form. Well, I hope that the Hatha Yoga Project has established a new field of scholarship in so far that there will be new texts available to scholars from a range of different disciplines who will be able to look at the material and study it um, from different perspectives. I hope also that uh, philologists in particular will see that there are many opportunities to do f um, further additions uh, and translations to, to look at other um, related uh, works um, uh, that are coming to light uh, th through our research. Uh, there's still a lot of work that we ourselves have to finish um, and that involves of course finishing the ten critical editions but also monographs that we're writing separately on particular areas of um, Hatha Yoga's history. So um, editing and translating texts is really just the first step. Uh, historicizing them is, is very important. And then writing about the broader history and how uh, that history connects with other um, disciplines. Medicine, for example, uh, is one that I've been looking at uh, with the support of the Ayu Yog project at Vienna University, uh, which is under the, um, the guidance of Dagmar Wiasik. That has been a very fruitful collaboration because it's um, uh, forced me to look uh, more closely at the therapeutic benefits and a lot of the terminology and so forth that's been used in yoga texts and to try to understand how it relates to um, earlier traditions. Um, and I think a lot more work can and is being done um, in, in that area. Um, I think uh, in, in the years to come, the, the critical editions will probably be mo the most valued uh, component uh, of what we're doing. And then people will probably have different opinions about the history, but particularly as more information becomes available, as more work is done in other areas, um, there will be, I'm sure, interesting discussions about some of the observations that we're making now. Um, but still the raw material, so to speak, the basis of the discussions will be the editions that we're um, producing. And a critical edition is a wonderful um, uh, tool for further research because whatever you put above the line, in, a, in other words, whatever you edit, is in itself just an, just an opinion. And as long as the um, the manuscripts that are, that are the basis of the edition, as long as they're well documented, and in our case there'll be plenty of testimonia, uh, plenty of notes uh, to go with, um, uh, with what we've collated, I think that will um, uh, enable scholars to come up with some different opinions, to look at what we've put above the line and see it in a different way. And I'm looking forward to um, to, to, to see how that unfolds. Of course I've learnt an enormous amount about, um, about the field itself and, um, and that has... It, the five years or the four and a half years that we've had so far has been tremendously intense, very busy, and as, as I mentioned before, I've had the opportunity to speak with a broad range of scholars, as well as work very closely with Jim, Mark and Daniela. And to put it very simply, I've just learnt an enormous amount, so much, of course, that I, I, I don't feel I've fully digested it. Um, and I, of course, whenever you look at this material, it always raises as many questions as it answers. Um, and if, if I had another five years of funding, I feel that in many respects that wouldn't be enough um, 
to, to, to finish everything. There will be an enormous amount of loose ends, as I suppose there, as there always is with published work. You, you have to draw the line at some point. Um, but the project has felt a little, bit, a little bit like we've been on the go constantly, working, um, traveling, talking and so forth. And personally, I haven't really had enough sort of quiet time to, 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 to fully sort of step back and look at it more broadly um, to, to sort of see um, perhaps uh, what uh, remains to be done or what should be done um, um, further and, and, and so forth. So I, yes, yeah, so in a sense I think when the project finishes I'll be out of a job and will need more funding but I'm also looking forward to having some time away from uh, the deadlines and the, um, uh, the, the, the constant commitments. Uh, that, that I think will be uh, valuable time. Um, and also making applications that may, that may take me in a slightly different direction, but I'm hoping uh, will also enable me to um, finish much of the work that I'm doing now. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.